I just returned from a trip to uh, the Baltics, Georgia, and Ukraine. They are incredibly worried about our commitment to them. Uh, and the, one of the major priorities that the Baltic countries have is a permanent U.S. military presence, not a base, but a permanent U military presence in the Baltics. Do you agree with that? Chairman, uh, once the new national security team is confirmed, I want to sit down with them and come up with a, a coherent, integrated strategy that uses yeah, diplomacy, I but military. I'm speak, specifically speaking of the Baltics. I do, sir. Um, on a trip that, uh, that I took with Senator Graham and Senator Klobuchar, we went to Mariupol close to the front lines where we, with the president of Ukraine, where we uh, took part in various uh, ceremonies and uh, meetings with these brave Ukrainians, 10,000 of whom have been slaughtered uh, by Vladimir Putin in his invasion of Crimea and uh, Ukraine. And uh, I know you can appreciate the fact that there was a ceremony where uh, the president of Ukraine gave their highest award to the mother of a young man who had just been killed by a Russian sniper a couple of days uh, before. It's always very uh, moving. And uh, it brings home graphically what the Russians have done in Ukraine and Crimea. Crimea in blatant violation of the Budapest Agreement for which they recognized Crimea as part of Ukraine in return for Ukraine giving up its nuclear inventory. Um, what do you think we ought to do about Russia, uh, General Mattis? Do you think we ought to maybe have, have uh, sanctions against Russia or basically sit by as we have for the last couple of years and watch their aggression, by the way, including their precision guided weapons against hospitals in Aleppo, the, the list goes on and on of the atrocities that have been committed by Vladimir Putin while we again try a reset as, uh, I've, I've watched three presidents uh, commit themselves to a new relationship with Vladimir Putin. All three have been an abysmal failure. <coughs> Uh, should we uh, ignore the lessons of history in our relationship with Vladimir Putin, and what should we be doing? Chairman, uh, history is not a straitjacket, but I've never found a better guide for the way ahead than studying the history. Since Yalta, we have a long list of times that we've tried to engage positively with Russia. We have a relatively short list of successes in that regard. And I think right now the most important thing is that we recognize the reality of what we deal with with Mr. Putin, and we recognize that he is trying to break the North Atlantic Alliance, and that we take the steps, the integrated steps, diplomatic, economic, military, and the alliance steps, the working with our allies to defend ourselves where we must. You are a distinguished uh, student of history, and as we are all aware that following World War II, a world order was established, which has held for basically the last 70 years. Do you believe that that, new, that world order is now under more strain than it's ever been? I think it's under the biggest attack since World War II, sir, and that's from Russia, from terrorist groups, and with what uh, China is doing in the South China Sea. And that would argue for us making sure we're adequately prepared to meet these challenges. I think deterrence is critical right now, sir. Absolutely. And that requires the strongest military. Do you think we have a strong enough military today in order to achieve that goal? No, sir. Thank you. Senator Reid.